Billy Stanlake up from Tasmania, off season for cricket. Uh, known Billy and his family for a long time. And uh, I've got a few questions here to uh, ask Billy uh, before he returns to Hobart and uh, the new pre-season. So, nice to see you. You too, All Brian. right, good stuff. I transferred over here to TSS in the last term of year 10. Um, I was lucky because I already knew a few boys were here. Um, your son, Sam, was here, who was a grade below me. Uh, George as well, who was two years below. And then I had Ben McDermott, and uh, Blair Tickner and Nick Stevens here at the time who I knew pretty well. So uh, it was a pretty easy transfer for me coming over um, into a new, a new school, which is a tough time when you do it at that age. But um, to have a few boys there that I knew definitely made it easy. And then, yeah, finished up my time in 2011, which is, yeah, what's that, 12 years ago, which has gone a bit too quick already. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, 2011 was uh, my last year. Yeah, I did. Um, my two GPS seasons, we managed to win both years, so um, that was quite a fun time. Um, not too many teams locked, I don't think, the other schools, because no. uh, me and Blair used to bully a few of the kids, so yeah. I don't think we were locked <laughs> too much. But no, nah, it was definitely, um, yeah, definitely still have good memories of those days. So. so you were a bowling side rather than a batting side, you reckon? No, eh? we, I think we had a bit of everything covered yeah. off. So we had Sam, your son, Nick Stevens at the time, who oh, was yes, a, a tremendous yes. player. So, yeah. um, you know, we were very fortunate to have, you know, a lot of talent in that team. So I, so I came through all the underage sort of Queensland stuff and then I think once I came here that was probably the first sort of start of training like to be I think a professional athlete because um, I'd never really done the gym stuff or yeah. training early mornings or after school so I think that's probably where it gave me a little taste of what it, actual training looked like and then yeah once I left here I sort of went to the academy stuff with Queensland cricket and then I think the year after that managed to get a rookie contract so it's sort of I think this gave me a bit of a taste of it and then yeah, yeah I think that followed on um, once I finished school. Then what was one of your highlights you know either at state or national level because you've done some pretty good stuff. Yeah I've been lucky I think I experienced quite a lot very early and very quickly in my career so um, you know I've been fortunate to pretty much play every part of the world just about in all different leagues and obviously play international career but I think oh, the one year I think playing Big Bash the year we won it at Adelaide um, even though I didn't get to play the, the finals because it was playing for the Australian team I think that year I think capped off and then we went on to play really well for Australia I think we, you know, we won a tri-series final at Eden Park in New Zealand against New Zealand so that was that was pretty special and then I think I went to IPL show after that and had a bit of success there. So I think that, that sort of 12 month period was, was a really fun time and had a lot of success in that 12 months. So, um, you know, it's been pretty hard to top, I think that 12 month. Yeah. He's bowled! Billy goes straight through him. I just love the look of what he's got. You know, he's almost seven feet tall, bowls close on 150 k's an hour. He can swing the new ball. He's got a little nasty streak in him as well. He likes bowling bounces. He executes things really well. Short ball. Um, and when we see him get a, a bit more of a tank and, and grow into his body a bit more and put on, put on a little bit of weight, I think he's someone that could be, with his natural attrib attributes, could be one of the you know the all-time great fast bowlers. Bowled him! Billy just goes bang! And straight up, keeper's got it. Alex Carey has his man. First ball, the big man, Billy Stanley. He's away for Australia. Let's hope that he, he, he stays in one piece and, and becomes the sort of cricketer that we all think he can be. And oh, this could be out. It should be out. Is out. Good catch on the boundary from Richardson. I must admit, when I first saw you, I always knew that you would play for Australia one day. So being a professional sportsman, you know, you've had your fair share of injuries, um, you know, and how do you approach that? Yeah, I think oh, the, probably the last two seasons is probably the, I've had a lot of injuries when I was younger as well and then the last two seasons. So I think it's probably been a bit harder the last two seasons because, you know, you're a bit more old, a bit more mature, you've already played. So you're sort of 28, so you're sort of coming into your prime. So it's probably not the time you want to be missing playing. But um, I think I learned the hard way early when I was younger, about 18, when I had lots of injuries to what it took to sort of prepare and take care of yourself to to play that level consistently. Um, you know, I think things happen, so you can't control injuries. Mm. Uh, but I think the one thing you can do is prepare your body, take care of yourself as best as possible. And if you, I think if you do all the right things and it still goes on, I think you can still be confident that, you know, you're gonna get back and you're gonna perform well. Um, sometimes yeah. things just happen and, 
not everything happens easy, so um, I think you just got to take that approach. I've sort of my domestic season here. Um, the body's in good nick, um, feeling strong, which is always important. Um, yeah, I sort of came with great confidence. We've been training really well, um, and then to get an opportunity tonight in front of the home crowd was, um, yeah, it was very exciting. In uh, and I know Mum and Dad really well, and one of the best stories, well, one of the best moments is when your son get picked for Australia, and. Uh, and I spoke to Warren and, you know, they booked their tickets. You're playing in the MCG, you're playing against India. Uh, it's a one day game, you know, uh, and you're probably going to be playing the next game in Sydney. Um, they get down there. Dad says he's, he's in the members bar looking out the window <laughs> and your name didn't appear on the, on the screen. So it's not one injury you've had. You've had a couple uh, of different ones along the way. So explain what happened that day. Yeah, I've had, I've had a lot of big injuries, but a lot of stupid little ones as well. Yeah, we were doing the warm up, um, just doing routine high ball catches on the boundary rope as you do before the game. You like to get a few, get a feel for the ground. Um, and yeah, just went up for the MCG have the the sponsor signage over the over the rope. They haven't. It's actually it's about double the height on the MCG for some reason. I've gone up take the catch sort of one hand because it was real high and I've just come down, landed on the rope, my ankle's just gone snap. I've looked down, there's a big egg, big egg on the side of my ankle and it was about 10 minutes before the toss, which is where you've got to name the teams and I was playing. So it was sort of a quick dash to the, down to the change rooms, physio, quick strap, couple of painkillers. Went back out, tried to test it out and then the coach said, nah, you're not playing. I said, yeah, probably fair enough because I couldn't really walk about 10 minutes later. So. Yeah, another game where mum and dad probably had the shits with me. <laughs> Every time I've seen the best players, sort of, I think they just they have their routine. They do the same thing day in and day out. Every training session, they do the exact same thing before every game. They don't they don't deter. They know what they want to do. So yeah, I think for me, I've sort of I learned that way with my body and sort of what I want to do with training, how to how to prepare yourself. So I think the most important thing for an athlete is working out you know, your routine and, you know, what works for you. So I think that's probably the, the biggest thing because I think that helps you be consistent. So, um, yeah, routine is probably the big one for me, I reckon. Yeah, obviously Blair Tickner, we finished together, who's doing quite well for yeah. New Zealand at the moment. Um, you know, we still, we still in touch a bit. I went to his wedding last August over in uh, New Zealand, so that was nice. We don't get to see each other too often, but, um, you know, definitely had a, good, a lot of good memories here bowling together out, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, out yeah. in the Oval there. So um, we stay in touch quite a bit. Dave McDermott, who was, I was here with briefly, um, yeah, you know, yeah, we were yeah. really good mates. So unfortunately, he's just moved back to Queensland and left yeah, me in Hobart. Yeah, yeah. So um, they're probably the two I, you know, kept Keep in touch up. with the most. Yeah, yeah I think you, it can be good and bad. It depends, I think, how you approach it. I think, I think Ben, when you're a professional athlete, it can be bad if you, if you take too much attention. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you get messages and if you have a bad game, people are going to spray you because they've probably, you know, lost money on the punt. So I think you can easily read, in, read too much into it. But, yeah. um, you know, if, if you're good with it, you don't sort of take too much notice of what people are saying. I think, you know, it's fine. But, um, you know, you can quickly see people who, you know, it affects them a lot because all they do is finish a game, they go on and they read all the negative comments. So um, I think there's definitely good and bad side to it. No, nah, they always had advice for me. They always kept me in check, so um, <laughs> I can never make sure I never carry on on the field. If I ever carried on the field, that'd be the first ones to spray me. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. no, nah, they've always been very good. They've always had advice for me. I'm um, still to this day, even though sometimes I probably. But no, nah, they've always been a good sounding board. Um, you know, they've definitely helped me throughout my life. Well, look, it's great to see you back here. But if there was one sentence or one thing, because the cricket program. Um, it seems to be turning out a lot of aspiring young cricketers. What would the piece of advice be? Now you're a wise, wise 28-year-old. You know, what would be one or two pieces of advice that you've, you could pass on or that's been given to you? Uh, I think, you know, listen to coaching, you know, I think when you're younger and try, try everything that your coaches say. Um, I think yeah. that's the best way to learn and move forward. Sometimes you can be stubborn when you're a bit younger and think you know it all but I think the best way to learn is to try everything and then you then you know what, what works and what doesn't and then I think just enjoy your time here yeah, yeah it goes yeah. pretty quick and you know I'm already 12 years out of school and I have lots of great memories playing here and yeah. being here at school so I think enjoy your time while you're here I think everyone you're always in a rush to finish school and get out but I think you know make sure you enjoy it while you're here because it is a lot of fun and I still think about it tonight I always have great memories so yeah yeah brilliant 
All right, well, uh, you never know. We might get you back for an old boys game in, uh, in the new pavilion one yeah, day. Yeah, I did yeah. play one a few years ago, so it'd be nice to get one back in here again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I remember that one, whether we should do uh, workplace health and safety with you bowling. But anyway, hey, it's been great catching up, all right? Thanks, All the best. Looking forward to seeing your new season down in Tasmania.